Hi, I'm Jason Hobbs. This is example 30 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. This time we're doing version 2.1 for Raisin Cane, which is an on the farm market in Valdosta, Georgia. Now, the way that I organize a digital marketing strategy plays out in six steps listed here, which we're going to walk through each of them to kind of give you an idea how I approach each. So as far as for research, which is step one, the idea behind it in my mind has always been to put together what I call as well, what's called a SWOT chart, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for the specific brand. And it just helps you kind of get a lay of the land in you use it to inform the decision making of the business operator. First, we answer the question, what's the goal of this strategy, followed by what's the customer point of view specifically, looking at them from a standpoint of you know, what are they thinking and seeing and feeling and doing as they're interacting with this brand over time. And then the pressing problem. So the SWOT chart, an example, some example questions and a couple of the possible reports, but it's always going to be specifically contextual to each individual business, right? So here's an example, of the unresearched that I've thrown together. And it's just the idea behind it is just to, and it's an iterative thing. It's going to, I treat them as a living document. So over time, you're gaining new learnings and you're documenting them, right? So the goal for this specific strategy, in my mind, and again, this is unresearched, is in adding the e-commerce experience for raising cane. And with a long, so what we would be setting up is the direct to consumer digital version, right? As well as for raising cane, as well as the building a direct audience for that raisin cane brand specifically which is under the king corbett farms you know family that umbrella so the customer point of view in my mind are parents interested in farm to their table for their family and i think that there's going to be a lot of people that are interested in it as soon as it's easy for them to access so and that's what we would be approaching here right that's the strategy. So the pressing problem is the parents are interested in farm to table for their family lack direct to consumer option from the raising cane on the farm market or on the market, on the farm market. Yeah, I did that wrong. <clears throat> but the point is they don't have a direct to consumer for these farms to be able to tap into. And especially when you also have the kitchen aspect and you also have the the market as far as for the farm market with raisin cane. So they have all these different items for sale. And then on top of that, they have all of this food that they cook. And you know, the idea being help these parents pull off farm to their table and do it with a plum, I guess is the best way to put it. So the second step is the website version one i start with the home page and you want to be clear about the sales pathway so here is a screenshot of the working demo if you go to jasonobsllc.com forward slash example dash three zero then you'll see a big green button to go kick the tires on the demo and this is the a screenshot from the top of it and then as far as for version one the goal of the first website, version one, is we're launching it in step two because we want to reflect the front door of the market. When they walk in that door, we want to start to allow them to check their account, follow up on if they ordered something that's going to be delivered, check delivery, etc., all from that homepage to begin with. And so we're keeping it very simple. We're saying, look, here's the navigation menus, and we're going to make sure that those pages are populated to begin with. Definitely have a you know a testimonials page where we'd use gather up to actually populate it with as people gave you know quality um reviews or testimonials or whatever and then you know, we'd use the home page widget areas because we're using essence pro to begin with right version one and then website version two just as a heads up 
I launch it in step four, and that adds the shopping cart with using WooCommerce and version one of the product catalog is now available at that point. And then, you know, likewise, we add in, because in step three, we actually handle the media planning for the first version of the media planning. So now we add version one of the media archive once we roll out at the end of step four. So uh, the home page, here's a quick example, just a screenshot of the actual home page of that Raising Cane demo I mentioned earlier. And what I really like about web, uh, WooCommerce for this is it allows you to either log in and actually view all your account information, or all you have to do is give an email address to start the process of actually you know, creating an account and being able to order and have stuff shipped to you and you know, do, digital goods delivered and access to different courses or to different memberships or different any number of possibilities that become possible. <laughs> All right, so the sales path in my mind here, and there's really two options to begin with. They're probably going to want to use both if they went, you know, with the strategy, but maybe they'd use the first one and then add the second one later or something. It's It's really... In my mind, it's a WooCommerce product page, and then people are gonna add those items to their shopping cart, go to the checkout page when they're ready, and then they're gonna go to the success page for each specific product once they are successful as far as they purchased it. And then the account area that I showed earlier on the homepage for order tracking. So as far as the other one though, in the future, and this is one that I'm using. So like I have a sales landing page set up with buttons. And if they click one of the buttons, it goes directly to the checkout page with that already added to the cart and their you know, total price and let's, let's pay, <laughs> let's get going, right? And then the ones that do a successful checkout, they are redirected to the success page for that specific product. And then obviously they can always go back for the account area on the home page to track the order. And it allows any number of items or deliverables to be purchased. So the third step is the audience. And this is where we're planning the media. So the very, the overarching goals, there's two overarching goals to this strategy in my mind for the Raising Cane brand. Number one is that direct to consumer sales channel, right? We're doing it through the website, it's digital, and it's more, it's just an enhanced direct to consumer because they already have the marketplace, but when people, they know what they want, but they don't have time to run by, definitely let them buy it, right? And you using WooCommerce, you can automatically push it to Amazon and eBay, I believe. I have to look for sure. Again, this is all on research. So we handle the archive, we set that up, the media plan, and then the creation process for the media. We wanna, it's gonna iterate over time and it's always gonna be specifically, it's like a fingerprint, like, Every single solitary one is always different for every single brand. So you always want to have it documented, though, so that it's not just one person or an outside party that is in charge of the media creation. They can bring in all the different because typically there's going to be talented people on the team that are going to be very, in a lot of cases, excited about the opportunity to do some media creation along with their typical as part of their typical job responsibilities. So and then from there, there's media distribution. So the media archive, first and foremost, we'll just keep it simple. I focus on everything we want to store it everything on website or actually on well in on the website because that's land that they actual the brand itself owns it's a brand asset so as is the archive the media plan in this instance i'd start and this is on research but just off the top of my head local mothers local parents within 40 miles of the farm and parents the shop online for direct access to a farm and on farm market, help them grow the, a stronger family with less. And that all kind of encapsulated under, in my mind, you know, farm to their table. So the show strategy in my estimation would be, I'd start with focusing on a Q&A where Jessica and her team, the King Corbett Farms family team, answer parent questions. 
and just see who comes to the live streams, see what they ask as well as, you know, who watches the replay of the live streams and what questions that they decide to ask and just make it as much of a two-way conversation between Jessica and her team under this Raising Cane brand and the audience that wants to be served by them, right? And then the media creation process I would start with the media person plus Jessica and let Jessica be basically the executive producer and the media person is the one that makes it all is responsible for, you know, the media going out and all the deliverables list, et cetera, being delivered week in and week out. And, you know, obviously they re report to Jessica, right? It, and it, again, completely unresearched, but the media person would run the video live stream, publish a copy of the video to the Raise the King website, distribute the copy of video across the web. They use the video to promote the next live stream. And all of that doesn't have to actually be done directly by the media person. It could be Jessica is actually farming that out to some third parties that she's found along the way. And the media person is just the kind of the coordinator so that if those folks need anything, the media person's able to make sure that they get it from the brand itself and then for jessica like i was saying she's the executive producer she's the showrunner in my mind so she's setting the tone and the message and the style etc for the raising king brand as it moves forward and creates its own media so and i start the like i said weekly show 30 minutes or so live stream jessica they have access to kitchens they have access to the market they have access to the farm they easily could get some you know bring somebody in to shoot a bunch of drone footage at different seasons and just compile all of that and use it over time and i mean there's just so many different possibilities and then all of that drone footage that's now part of the brand it's a brand asset right because you have access to that going forward and this is a really simple e example deliverables list they're typically going to be much longer but they a lot of times they do start out literally this simple so recorded copy of the weekly live stream so however long it would end up they would live stream it say to the facebook page for the brand and or the youtube channel for the brand and then once it was over they would download a copy of that and they take the audio version over to anchor.fm for the podcast, one minute IG video they'd want to probably put together, as well as some Pinterest images would be my guess. And the media distribution, it's a high bar, but it, the bar nonetheless is, in my mind, is to give the people what they want, where they want it, how they want it, every time they want it. Just understanding that with the internet, direct to consumer, etc you're dealing with an empowered consumer, full stop. For video, I use Wistia when I'm putting it, embedding it on the actual brand website, the Facebook brand page. I'll typically upload natively to um, the Facebook brand page and YouTube and to LinkedIn and so forth. And then the audio, like I mentioned earlier, I use Anchor.fm because it'll push it to like 10 or 11 different podcasting platforms automatically, written in images, you'd run that through the blog in my mind, RaisingCaneValdosta.com. So the prospects, we'll go, the digital offer, and this is unresearched obviously, but I would approach it as, look, we're sinking the on-the-farm markets brick and mortar product offering or their product catalog, and we're going to sync that to their online store slash website. And maybe we have to do it in phases because of budget and time constraints, whatever the case is, but the idea is I want 100% sync between the two on whatever you know timetable makes sense for the budget, et cetera. So that's the solution that we're looking to offer to people. And then the access is just the primary access point bar none in my mind is the homepage, raisingcane.osta.com, right? And then the value, on research, but I just I think that parents that are interested in farm to their family table, they're able to accomplish that suddenly with way less effort. And I believe that they will pay for an experience at a premium possibly. So I would want to definitely do some testing as they were doing different prices. Because my idea would be 
when we talked about the solution, we sync the current product offering, the current catalog, but then beyond that, in my mind, you would want to add some additional, like test some additional options to where on a recurring basis, they're helping them solve. They're kind of filling up a couple of places on the planning of the you know, weekly family menu, possibly, or they're planning for the coming um, uh, holiday period, maybe whatever, you know, any number of possibilities. So the education in my mind, kind of the message is that they're a locally owned business and they have a deep love for the community around Von Ossa, Georgia. So, and they've been there for years and years and years. So the online store, the catalog off options, like I was saying, you, you could replicate the product catalog. You could introduce recurring membership options and giving them, you know, basically giving them a different way to purchase to where they're automatically paying every month and you're doing the process every month and you, it's kind of just, um, it's foundational, you know, every single month. And hopefully you'll be we find ways as far as to upsell and there's any number of possibilities but the first step is you have to in my mind it's all of the above right so we do number one first and number two second and then from there we're going to continue the the product catalog as far as for the on the farm market the brick and mortar version we're going to keep that synced over time and then we're going to be looking for what are the recurring membership options that we can that people are interested in what are the 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 problems that they're encountering as we get to know them what are the problems they're encountering that a recurring interaction with raising cane could actually solve so the customer attention life cycle, everybody starts out as a stranger. At some point, they're going to be, they're going to identify themselves to Raisin Cane as someone that's interested in farm to their family table. And at that point, they'll become an audience member. From there, they're going to qualify themselves as someone that's in charge of feeding their family. So, and you know, that's why, and it could be just themselves, they're still you know, single and whatever, or it could be the fact that, you know, they have a brood at home that they're feeding. And so they're shopping in the market and maybe they're buying from the, um, from the farm in season, you know what I mean? So we want to kind of identify them as a qualified prospect so that we can make a, a contextual offer. And ideally, obviously, they're buying, they're able to buy subscription service from Razy Cane as well as they're able to purchase stuff from the the brick and mortar catalog as well. As far as for customers, I cover the conversation in the feedback loop. As far as the conversation here, these are the places, when we talk about the cover, customer conversation, I like for it to be a two-way conversation between mutually respected parties. That way, both parties are listening and cognizant of the how the other one is feeling and so forth, right? So they're in, they, they respect, each other so they're willing to listen and you know learn and move forward so with that in mind the i'd add live chat and email to the current setup which is largely the phone and face to face and i definitely introduce video meetings just the ability to do that when you're using drift for your live chat and email the ability to very simply automate the video meeting, the booking process for that and combine it with the email and live chat. It's just so simple. And there's a lot of times where it's actually a value add for people because they're able to put a face with the name and they feel even more secure. And so it takes less time. It kind of compresses everything because of the video and so forth. All right, so the customer feedback loop, I use gatherup.com. It, it emailed what is called a, NPS net promoter score question. And the way it works is it basically asks scale of one to 10, how likely are you to share raising cane? This is in what raising cane would do is after you came and purchased from them or whatever, 
they and they had your email address, they'd go over to gather up and put that in there and gather up would email the NPS question. And if you replied one to eight, you'd be added to what I refer to as a customer service queue. And if you send back a nine or a 10 response, well, you're thanked and then you're invited to share your thoughts publicly, right? And you're given a bunch of shortcuts to different places where you can go and speak about them depending on which one you prefer. Now, is the sixth step is campaigns. And I'm going to give you three different examples. Again, this is completely unresearched, but I'm trying to make it as helpful as possible to kind of paint the picture in your mind as far as how all these pieces are fitting together. Because there's a bajillion possible tactics available when it comes to digital marketing, but it really, it boils down to you need a strategy that works for you specifically. And then that's going to determine which of the different tactics are going to make sense for you. So here is the, the first one is what I like to call breaking the ice. Typically it's a monthly project and it's an audience of in my to start with and again on research is those parents that are responsible for feeding the family we're looking to speak to them as strangers and get their attention and see if it if they're interested in raising Kane the brand and if they're interested in Jessica and they're interested in the team around Jessica etc right and then the story behind them and etc cetera, etc cetera. introduce the weekly live stream that would be the kind of the first step is, hey, we're going to we get together for questions, live stream, 30 minutes, every so forth, and just have Jessica and her team. There's so much acumen that's been accrued amongst that team. I would just that's what I would want to tap into initially. And again, unresearched, but that's where my gut goes to and help them plan their pantry, maybe a way to look at it. The two-way conversation, typically a yearly, and this is more often than not, especially in, from what I've found, it's more of an email thing. Again, parents interested in farm to table, farm to their family table, so to speak. And it's just an email to those parents that re request access. The conversation is interested in farm to table and how they can make that happen, whether what are the different options and you know what are the other farms and what are the other whatever local citations would be i normally break these up into three month windows in the way that i usually do it is just i use brightlocal.com they have a local citation building service and data aggregator submissions service and it's just like two to five bucks per profile and they'll go out and scrape the internet and come back and say hey here's all the different places that matter for your specific industry and here's how your profile looks and here's where it, it's broken and here's where it's incomplete and here's where it's just non-existent and here's where it's perfect right and they'll go out and you tell them which ones based on your budget etc and they go out and you fix everything and add the additional information on the places that you didn't you weren't listed previously all right so as far as if you wanted to do it yourself i've broken up the the diy investment into different pieces trying to get more specific and because some people will want to use the the website part of others may not need it they just want to you know kind of incorporate the customer conversation and some of the the media stuff etc um so kind of breaking them out so hopefully it'll help with that 39 a month for the liquid web that's the beginner managed with commerce hosting may very well want to start at 250 a month just so that you can have all the the big guns from the beginning, especially with an on the farm market like this, where they're probably going to be able to start pretty quickly with online sales, even if it's from people that are coming in to the place and suddenly saying, oh, wow, you know, they have a website now that where I can order stuff and et cetera, and they can ship it to me. And so just to help them kind of shop in a different with a different eye, so to speak. I would definitely look at man goals and that's for a bunch of search engine optimization tools. You just, you want to make sure that the media and the website, et cetera, and the store, all the pieces of what you're putting into your website are connected well with all the search engines of the web, right? You want everybody else to understand exactly what it is, who it's for, and make sure that they're able to connect them, right? So that man goals will help with that. G Suite for email, 
as far as off of the brand and then docs and slides and so forth. Yoast, the premium SEO plugin, another one of the tools that'll help get everything, you know, as you figure stuff out using man goals, you'll be able to implement it on the website specifically using the Yoast, the premium SEO plugin. And then Essence Pro is the studiopress.com. The, it's a Genesis child theme that I use. And if you've never bought anything from them before, it's 130 bucks. If you've already bought something, it could be a lot cheaper. Media, DIY investment, wistia.com for the video hosting and analytics. The Soapbox, which is the Chrome Google Chrome extension, enabling anyone to record, edit, share, and measure presentation video. It's what I'm using now. I also have Ecamm Live, and we'll be using it for live streaming in the future. And it was with this being a live stream suggestion, as far as at least the unresearched version, Ecamm Live, 79 bucks, and um, that's, uh, you can just Google it, you'll see it. The 50 bucks a month for Drift, as well as 40 bucks a month for Gather Up for the customer DIY. So if you have questions, my email and my number, feel free to give me a call. If, if I don't know your number, I'm not going to answer, so leave a message, and I always check and get back as soon as I can. What's next is Example 31 will be coming out on Thursday of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. This is going to be the first version 3. I'm pretty excited, and that's a big step forward, hopefully, in the format of how I'm doing these. The idea to, is to make each of these examples in you know by iterating 1 through 1,000 or however many I can get through, which I'm on 30 about to do 31, um, you know, just to improve it for how helpful it is for you. So if you have questions, let me know. Have a great one.